Good morning, and thank you for joining us for our Fit for Learning webinar series. Again, what we do here is we go over various topics that we gather from participants across the nation, and we address these every month. Things that folks are curious about or just have more questions or want to learn more about are really what we focus on in these series. So again, a lot of the feedback that we've received and had questions about is about credit scores. What's their purpose? What's the importance that they have and what role do they play on our overall financial journey? So today we're gonna uh, address exactly that, what to think about, how to move forward as you approach credit scores. My name is Kenji Noguchi. I know on the screen here, we do have Heath Hagen. Now, if you joined us for our live session last week, we did have a few technical difficulties, so we do apologize, uh, but we wanted to ensure that you did have a proper recording with some clear action steps and maybe some good information along the way too. Today, it is just going to be me on the voiceover, but rest assured, you're always welcome to reach out to myself or Heath or any member of our team. If you have any questions at all, I would like to talk with one of us. So on today's agenda, we're going to talk about our credit scores and how do they work? What is our best practice of how often we should check these things? And then what can we do and what are our options if we just simply don't have any credit or if we like to rebuild our credit as we move forward? And very lastly, we'll touch on some of those strategies that you might be able to use or uh, consider if you do have erroneous or incorrect marks on your actual credit report. So we'll go ahead and dive right in here and I'll ask everyone just to take a step back and really think broadly about what actually is a credit score. How does that actually work? Well, the easiest way to say this here, folks, is a credit score is a numerical representation of how worthy are you to be lent money to? That's your credit worthiness. Now, a lot of the times these credit scores, they're based on information from various credit reports by those three major reporting agencies that we think of, Equifax, TransUnion, Experian. All of these different uh, data aggregators, if you would, re receive information about your lines of credit, such as your personal loans, credit cards, auto, mortgage loans, whatever it may be. They, yet, they then calculate these scores based on a formula that's going to de uh, determine that credit worthiness. Now, we'll dive into what actually plays a factor into that formula here very soon. But again, when we think about a credit score, it's these creditors or these lenders validating us. Are we making payments on time? Do we have a good mix of credit? How long have we had credit? And what are our behaviors when we do actually have credit? Are we using it all? Are we paying it off? Are we constantly getting new lines of credit? All of those different things play a factor in that credit score. Now, why is this important? How does this work? Well, we use credit almost in our daily lives. Now, maybe you're a cash only person and that's okay, but majority of people do end up finding themselves having a credit card. Maybe if you'd like to be a homeowner down the road, you might have a mortgage. Maybe you'd like to buy a new car or a boat and you might have an auto or vehicle loan. A lot of these things are going to have some type of relationship with your credit score because most of the time if you're not buying things outright in cash you're going to use credit or financing of some sort so when these lenders are underwriting you looking at hey do we want to approve this person they're going to use that credit score as a baseline so i've talked a lot about some of those things that we might have to consider that factor into our credit score but what exactly are they here so we like this handy pie chart just to give a visual representation, but I think you might notice off the bat, what's the first most important thing here? What's going to be our payment history? The payment history here. It's gonna show, have you repaid credit that you have it in the past? Do you typically have late or missed payments? Any of those negative impacts might have a relation to your score, obviously, but keep that in mind for a lot of these folks of, well, do I have debt? currently am i paying them on time and am i actually repaying back that debt it's a common thing that we find with folks in finance if they're struggling or maybe you know have some inconsistencies with their budget they might find themselves in more more uh, financial bad behavior if you would and they might just say psychologically hey we want to avoid these debts we know we have them we just don't want to think about them let's push them to the side well keep in mind that is not going to be the best practice the biggest factor here in your FICO score is going to be that payment history. So keep that in mind. And what's next? Well, it's going to be that amount owed. 
And I think most of us here might instantly say, well, hey, yeah, I know that. That's that credit utilization ratio folks talk about, right? How much, how much do we have owed? So again, the credit utilization ratio is the revolving credit that you have divided by the total credit available to you. So what I mean by that is, let's say you have a line of credit for $1,000 and you have used $500 of that $1,000 line. Well, what's your credit utilization ratio at? It's at 50%. The rule of thumb that we want for that utilization ratio is approximately 30% or less. So keep that in mind. Are we making payments on time and do we have credit, but how much of it are we using? Again, 30% is that number we'd like to use as a standard. Now, there are so many other things that we have to keep in mind too, and we'll see that on these other factors on the screen. Is it new credit that we have? Are we applying to multiple new credits within a short period of time? And a good example that we might think of is maybe a new family who recently purchased a home and went through underwriting there. Recently, I found out that they're having a child soon, so they're gonna need a new car, a bigger car soon as well, and they might have all of these different types of credit lines that they're applying to, in a short time period. So keep that in mind, that does matter as well of any recent credit accounts that you've opened or are taken in consideration when you're getting through underwriting there, that does play a factor in your score. What else plays a factor in our score? Well, that length of credit history or maybe even that credit mix. Do you only have credit cards? Do you have student loans, mortgages, auto loans, personal loans? How long have you had those loans or lines of credit? All of that plays a factor here. So while we're on this slide, I think I'll just address that elephant in the room where most people typically ask is two common questions. Now, the very first here is, well, what happens to my credit score if I pay off a large debt all in one sweep? Well, first things first, we'll say congratulations on doing that because that is our goal. Let's clear those debts out but let's just take a look at this pie chart and see how that might play a factor. Well, it's easy to give you a blanket answer, but let's use an example here. Let's say an individual has $20,000 in credit card debt. That's their only type of credit line that they have, the only credit that they've only ever had for five years or so. They've always made their payments on time. They're below that 30% threshold of how much of credit is used. So they wonder, well, what happens if I now pay off that total balance of my credit card? In the short term, typically you might see a negative impact on your FICO score. And the reason for that is, well, it might affect some of these other factors at play here. If you only have credit cards and you pay it all off completely, well, now that credit mix might be lower. Maybe that amount's owed is lower, sure, but then now you're not using all of the credit available to you. So this is kind of a dangerous game that these creditors or lenders might have sometimes too, where they will say, you know, we don't want to increase your credit score unless you're actually using credit. You actually have to use a card. So I actually have to carry a balance on my card for it to actually make an important impact on my credit score. And that's true. But more importantly, you have to ensure that you're making those payments at the end of the month. You're not over utilizing yourself or over leveraging yourself but you also have still some type of you know, credit mix or new credit may be available to you. So again, typically when folks pay off a big, big debt that they might have, it might affect their credit mix or length of credit history in the interim. It might give them a negative impact, but in the grand scheme of things, when we're looking down the road here, a year later or many years later, that score is going to improve because you're doing the right things. So keep that in mind here, folks, again, that sometimes it does play an impact, but it's more of a long-term effect that you have to keep in mind. And if you do have any major life changes ahead of, well, if I do pay off this debt now, is that gonna affect some credit worthiness for a next purchase that I'd like to have? And maybe while we're on this page here, another thing I'll address that a lot of folks ask about is a soft inquiry versus a hard inquiry. What's the difference? Well, soft inquiry is a informative pool that creditors or lenders might have on you or where you might be able to get a pre-approval rate for that informative purpose. So again, these are typically base ground, average rounded numbers that they've seen historically where creditors will get that publicly available data and then send you a pre-approval. Maybe you've gotten something in the mail saying, 
you're pre-approved for 50,000 at this rate for this amount of time. Well, those are coming from soft inquiry, soft pools. Now, let's paint the picture here. You might say, well, I like those details on that pre-approval that I received in the mail, so let me pursue it further and let me actually accept those terms. Now, once you actually accept those terms with that creditor, you are now on the hook. They're gonna go through underwriting. They're gonna find out, okay, well, what's your payment history? How much do you typically use? What type of credit and what type of you know, borrower are you? So once they go through that process and fully underwrite you and look at your demographic and all your finances and everything in, in between, well, now they might give you a final representation of, hey, this is what you might be approved for or not. Again, a soft inquiry is gonna be more informative, does not affect your credit score, whereas a hard inquiry, a hard acceptance of terms, perhaps from an offer from a creditor, that is where they uh, will affect your credit score. Typically, we see it in a range of three to 10 points every time you do that. So keep that in mind there, folks. So how often should I check my credit score? Well, our rule of thumb is always the free, free option for you here use annualcreditreport.com. Now this is a completely free service. You get one free report every year from Equifax, Experian, TransUnion. But I mentioned that uh, because again, we obviously like to do it free. You can use any of these other options, Credit Karma, Credit Sesame, Boost, Experian, whatever it may be. You might even be interested to know that maybe now your banking products or even your retirement accounts might have something of this version included too. So keep that in mind, you can, Check your report as often as you need to. Our suggestion is at least once a year via the free annual creditreport.com. But always the rule of thumb is you, you do have any major life events or changes or plans ahead, that is the best time to do it. What does your credit scores look like before getting married, before a divorce, before buying a new home, before a car? It's good to check these things and have a base ground book. Again, keep in mind, are they doing soft inquiries or hard inquiries? Is that affecting my uh, credit score in the short interim if I am doing uh, a lot of applications and approvals? What should I do if I have no credit or if I'm rebuilding my credit? And I think the easiest answer here that a lot of us jump to is, you know, use an example is credit cards. Well, a lot of the times, an individual, maybe um, a child graduating high school, going to college, we'd like to start building their credit for them. And one thing that most parents might do is add them as, that's right, an authorized user, an authorized user onto the credit card. Now, how does that help? Well, think about that. If that individual never had a long length of credit history or has never had any type of credit, this could be a good, quick, uh, quick easy avenue that parents or other individuals or family members, friends might take with each other to help build each other's credit. So if that current user has a great payment history, has had the card for a long amount of time, those benefits can instantly be translated to that new authorized user. So maybe that's one option. Another consideration might be just becoming a complete co-signer or co-account uh, co holder on that credit line. Similar to that authorized user, that co-owner can then now reap the rewards of maybe a longer tenure history or maybe even excellent payment history. So those are some quick, two easy answers, but what are some of those other options if those aren't available? Maybe a consideration would be a secured credit card, almost like a deposit collateral account where you put money down and then you get a credit line available to it and those payment goes, uh, goes towards it. Maybe another consideration might be your utility bill or your Wi-Fi bill. All of these different things, if you have your name on them and you're making payments on time and you're paying your dues and your bills, well, those reports and transactions do go to those credit agencies. So again, maybe your utilities and your Wi-Fi bill and maybe you start adding your name onto those in lieu of someone else and Venmoing them, right? So think about these things. How can I get creative with building my credit, authorized users, co-signers, secure credit cards, utility bills, all those different things might be able to help you out. 
Again, there are many other options that we could go through here, but we're always happy to have that conversation with you. So if you're ever interested, reach out to one of us. Let's review your options and go through what's gonna be the best fit for you. So are there any strategies to remove negative items from my credit report? Now there certainly are, and I, I think our best practice that we always like to share is truly go to that creditor first. Now, what I mean by that is, let's say maybe you use American Express and they just say, hey, you had a missed payment, but in actuality, you actually paid the payment one day before and they had just accounted for it incorrectly. Well, go to that creditor, American Express first, and then call them and dispute that error or inconsistency. Go to the creditor first, see if they will make those changes based off your dispute. Now you have to have valid arguments for that and proof in the pudding, but obviously that is gonna be the path of least resistance to go directly to that creditor. Now, maybe they say, no, we're right, you're wrong, I'm big, you're small, right? Well, that's okay. Well, then the next step then is you can ask for goodwill, still saying, hey, well, maybe if, then if you are still gonna count it as late, maybe if I pay this amount of debt by this amount of time, you'll wipe them a mark. Try to negotiate goodwill with them. Maybe that could be another consideration. What's another option? Well, the next lines is going to be collection agencies or, you know, agency attorneys, if you would, who are going to re represent you and dispute those marks that might be found on your credit report. Those are going to be more costly options, obviously, here. But if there are important marks that you'd like to get removed, that could be in benefit for you. And very lastly, here is something that we never typically suggest, but it is an option for those to think about is chapter seven or chapter 13 bankruptcy. For those might be able to remove those credits completely. Now, if you do take that path, that is going to affect your credit score for the next seven to 10 years. So there is downside to doing that, folks. The message here is that there are a lot of options here to get things removed from your credit report. But the first ask that we have to be aware of is to keep our head on the swivel know what's happening around you, know what's happening to your report, what type of re remarks are you getting and where are you at currently today? So again, that's our ask is to be aware, but if you need to take any of those steps to actually remove marks, you certainly can. Now keep in mind too, that typically changes to your credit score reflect after about 30 to 45 days from new data, new information from new lenders and new payoffs. So keep that in mind as well too. So we've talked a lot about different things uh, of the credit scores. And as always, we always like to give folks here action steps, things that they can take away here and have a confidence about. So very firstly here, what's the first thing that we should think about and do? Well, we need to be checking our credit report, right? Stay aware, keep our head on the swivel. Again, you can do it from any of the major three. We always like to advise annualcreditreport.com and double check and see if you do have any errors or inaccuracies or maybe even fraudulent accounts that have uh, come up onto your report. Okay, so now we know what we have, where we're at with our credit report. Now we need to just have a plan if we do have any errors or inaccuracies. And if there are them, uh, if there are any, then we need to get those corrected. Again, online, phone, mail, our suggestion is to start with the creditor first. If not them, then you can go through uh, directly to one of the agencies and dispute and if not them then we can take legal or other action next thing that you have to do and this is always part of that rule of thumb in a financial plan is we got to be paying our bills on time continue to pay down those balances if you have bare minimums that you have to make we have to be paying every minimum we have to keep our credit score alive and make sure again that payment history big factor isn't going to lower our score because of a late payment or a missed payment so we need to make sure, hey, we're paying all of our minimums, we're paying down our balances, and if we can, we need to be aiming for that 30% utilization rate across the board. Very lastly, we're gonna continue to monitor and manage your credit on an ongoing basis. So whether you wanna do that yourself or if you simply wanna use one of those apps, you know, again, Experian, Mint, Credit Karma, et cetera, where you get an occasional check on it, I think that's okay too but our best suggestion still is do that full credit report check at least once per year at annual credit report, but always have an idea of what your credit is as an ongoing basis, because who knows what life might uh, present itself to you. And if things have to change pretty quickly, you wanna be prepared for that. 
again, we appreciate you joining us here. We appreciate you watching this re-recording here. If you have any questions at all, you're always welcome to reach out to any one of us here on the team. You're welcome to schedule a one-on-one -on -one call, email any of us, and we'll be happy to help you out as you move forward on your journey. Very lastly here, be sure to register for our August Fit for Learning webinar series. We're gonna be talking about child education funding options. This is gonna be a very powerful webinar for those with new families or are considering it, or maybe even just want to give a gift to their loved ones, nieces, nephews, cousins, et cetera. This is uh, going to be very helpful for you as you move forward for any of those new parents, uh, but also for anyone else who's just interested in about these types of accounts. So join us. We'd love to have you. and We look forward to seeing you there. That is all we have here today, folks. So thanks again for joining us for a Fit for Learning webinar here. We look forward to seeing you next month. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Have a wonderful rest of your day.